um, another junction. Um, it's quite nice if we zoom in when where we're at the signs, we can actually see that the um, edge markings have all been put in as well to the service, that's because we've modeled the medians too. Um, the signs themselves, again, this is straight from the IFC file, but you can just open this actual sign in in uh, in in Navisworks and just you know scroll around it. You can see that it's a, it's full 3D, no images or anything like that. Um, sorry. Um, the whole thing take about 30 minutes. Uh, so yeah, no problem. Uh, I'll make a start. So. Cyan and Line Pro, uh, they basically work with AutoCAD and AutoCAD Civil 3D. Um, <clears throat> the Dubai version that we're showing, it, it, it's very new. Um, in fact, we were over in Dubai with some of my other colleagues, some of my co-workers um, in December, um, demoing it to the RTA. We had a meeting with the RTA as well. It was very well received amongst some of our other software, such as AutoTurn, ParkCAD, uh, things like that. Um, the idea is that the the software automates a lot of processes that would otherwise take a long time, um, and and that's what I'm going to demo as we go through the the presentation. One of um, the the most important features that we have in Sign Pro, which is what I'm going to start with, is the Arabic keyboard. It, it's ultimately a virtual keyboard, um, uh, and what it does is it it takes the the pain out of gluing blocks together if you can imagine the arabic uh, font is a compound font and that means that uh, letters change and where they're situated in, in in the words themselves if you if you think about having to do this manually this is a process that you know even for a, a small destination such as you know you know letter wise letter count wise such as the word dubai um you would have to change the end letter the start letters the middle letters but with the Arabic keyboard, everything is, you know, done for you. You basically either type it out um, over here in, in in the text box, and it'll appear, or you can paste in. So, you know, if you're not um, an English speaking, sorry, if you're not an Arabic speaking person, um, it's really easy to paste those destinations in, as is what's going on here, uh, and then just pop them in your drawing. Let me just bring that back. So if I just pause the uh, the video for a second, I'm going to point out some things here for you. You can see that <clears throat> we can show on the keyboard either UK, English, or Arabic um, are both together. Uh, this is good when you want to sort of identify what letters are related to what key. Obviously, if you're in Arabic speaking, just you can just type in directly. But we can also change the color. We can change the height in stroke widths. And we've also got special characters as well. So if you need to put in anything with a, an accent, uh, you can use the special character buttons to do that, so it, it it does cater for everything. And I just I just let this run through so you can see the the characters coming out. And what I'm doing here is I'm just showing everything being changed on on the fly. So <clears throat> what we have now is we have um, one of our very very advanced uh, sign dialog builders. Now this is a a, a highway sign builder. This is sign F uh, five five one. The great thing about this is that <clears throat> this is one of the, the really major features. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of like all of the 551s rolled into one. Um, as per the new manual, um, the Dubai Traffic Control Devices manual versions 1 and 2, the new versions, we've then separated these down into all the separate signs as well. So when you have the point 0.1 version, the point 0.2, for instance, you know, with the, the, guy, the highway signs, the gantry signs, you can now separate them out and, and basically you know do them separately as well. But what's going on here is you know we have the the sign. We can have a save state, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, choose background color, um, different text styles. We can also change the border as well. Um, we have uh, symbols, various uh, certain symbols, and the trailblazer symbols depending on you know what route you're on. And obviously the text. Uh, this is all handled for you. With this one as well, you can change the lane configuration. Um, and then change the XI and add a distance as well. <clears throat> okay. So now what's happening is the different choices are being made, and because it's dialogue driven, uh, we can go back in and we can make the same. We can use the same function uh, to basically create a different sign. And then we'll just add in the exit plate. Uh, again, we've got all the latest ones as well from the new manual, and they've just been added. 
So if I go to the slide and show you the dialogue, um, what, what we're seeing here is we're seeing one of the dialogues uh, for one of the signs, one of the major builders. And what this diagram is showing is that we design the sign, and if we want, we can save its state, okay? And then this produces the sign. So what happens is if we have 10, 20, 30, 40 of these signs in a drawing, and we save their states as we go, the great thing is, is that if you need to make a change, you, it's not a massive change at all, you just reload the sign state, uh, and then OK it, and then pop that into your drawing, and you know everything is saved again. So what's happening is your whole signing scheme is being saved in text form as well uh, into an external file. So you can then even reuse those for other projects. If you've got similar types of signs, you can actually edit um, the save state files too. So you can just edit the save state file if you have like 10 of these types of signs, and then just reopen those in the load box here. And then you've got your 10 signs done. And you know, if you want to, you've not even been inside AutoCAD. So it, it's a great feature, basically, that you could even set up uh, an infrastructure of signs and then just reload them into the drawer and through the save state feature. And it, it would basically, that text box, sorry, this, this piece of um, uh, notepad, uh, this notepad file, if you loaded that into this, it would produce this arrangement down here, okay? And that, that's, that's a pretty good feature, you know? It, it means it, someone can actually design signs from the desktop or their phone or something like that. Okay, <clears throat> so one of the very exciting features of Sign Pro Dubai as well is the ability to create 3D signs. Um, <clears throat> we can turn any sign into 3D and we can even turn things into 3D that aren't our objects as well by, by our tagging feature that we have. So maybe you've created a sign, for instance, that uh, is not created in our software. And even blocks as well, we can tag those objects um, just to give you a bit more information on how versatile the tool is. But what we've got here is we've got a gantry sign. Now, you can see quite a few just uh, around the drawing here on the right-hand side, but what, what's happening is we've got a purple boundary. And what we do is if we have multiple signs to mount in one arrangement, we, we put this boundary around them and name it. So all I do is I zoom in on my sign I want, um, and then I go to the BIM toolbar that we can see at the top. Okay. And then all I need to do at this stage is just press, oops, sorry, I've, I've not the slider. <laughs> Let's go back. There we go. So I just press play. So I'll let that run through. So basically what I'm doing is I'm zooming in on the sign. Uh, I'm going to the BIM toolbar. Uh, I'm pressing 2D to 3D button, and, and there it is. It just comes in uh, straight away. Okay. I'm trying to pause the, 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 the video for it. It keeps jumping, and I'll just let that go through. Um, and again, when I view it, you'll notice that um, the good thing about this is that it, it's 3D geometry. Okay. It's AutoCAD objects. One of the important things to us is not to have proxy objects, not to have object enablers. You don't need anything like that. Um, this is literally a 3D block. So, for instance, you could design your sign, turn it into 3D, and the same goes for the sign objects as well. Um, and you could send it to a, a co-worker, a sign shop, and they would just be able to view it. You don't have to explode it. You don't have to send them an object enabler. They don't need any uh, OLA proxy objects or anything like that. It, it just works. It, it's geometry, which is really good for the user. <clears throat> They also come in at the correct location as well. I don't, I don't know if you can see, but at the location of the sign, there is what we call a location pointer. Now, so when you design your 3D, your sign in 2D, you can basically send it to 3D, but it will go to the correct position. It will glue to the surface. And what you've just seen there as well, we've added a datum as well. So if you design your sign, you've done all that stuff, you can add, say, a seven meter datum. So may, maybe use a, a different number, that's fine. What we're saying is you can add that datum so it appears, say, seven meters above the, the surface. So all your signs, basically, you know, with one button press, they turn to 3D, they go to the correct position, they go to the correct scale, they go to the correct bearing, they go to the correct level, and then they go to the correct datum on top of the carriageway as well. So you, you've really got like a, a very powerful tool there and what we're trying to emphasize is you do your design work in 2D, you be an engineer using the tools that we give you to design signs and then one button press and 
everything goes to the surface exactly where it needs to be. So really, it, it's very, very simple. You don't need to, to worry about it at all. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to create a, a regulatory sign arrangement here. Um, <clears throat> and what I'm doing is I'm trying to show that, again, we've got a, it, it's not so much that it's a complex sign arrangement, it's that it's lots of signs in one arrangement. So, you know, I've got a keep right or a right turn ahead. Uh, I think it's the tram sign. And the next one uh, is the, is it the speed round I'm putting in? Let's have a look. Ah, no, no pedestrians, okay. Now, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the alignment tools to move and align the signs so they're all balanced and correct. And then, as I said earlier, um, we're going to put a boundary around the sign group, uh, and then we get our purple boundary. Now, this, this serves really two purposes. Number one, it means that we can detail the sign. Uh, and when I say detail, I mean give it its height and width and, and what, sorry, yeah, height and width and things like that. And that also helps us mount the sign safely on posts. So if you want to put the sign in the footway or in the central reservation, you're going to want to put it on a post uh, of some type. So we do steel and rectangular hollow sections, um, but we also do passive posts as well. Uh, we do several types of passive posts. Uh, and this is also, as we said before, so we can actually effectively turn it into 3D. So that one little boundary has a lot of uses. So here we are um, in the wind loading section. Now, <clears throat> the wind loading section is basically included in the software. It, it's so you can mount signs safely, as, as, as I said a second ago. What happens is, it always pulls in the details of the last sign that, that we did, but if you want to change it, you can just use this pull down box um, in the sign details section. Going along the top, um, some of the sections we have are sign details, 3D sign export, 2D profile, um, UK regional settings, and the help file. The help file gives you all the structural details of what we use to mount that sign and put it on a post and in concrete safely. On the right hand side, it's changing views and calculation views and stuff like that. Okay. So, What's happening now is I'm going to change the posts, okay? Because what you can see is we've got two crosses right in the middle. Now, what we want is we want two ticks, and we want, in the first instance, we want the post usage to be below 100%. Above 100% always produces a failure, which is correct. We want the post usage to, below, to be below 100%. So I'm cycling through the posts here, and you can see that tick that comes. And the next thing, I want to make sure the foundations are suitable for my design. Um, if I just bring that back a little bit, we can have a look. So what, what we've got is we've essentially got a fail in the foundations. Now, we want a green tick, and we've also got the live calcs on the left-hand side. You can see that little panel with the bars in. <clears throat> Red indicates fail. Yellow indicates you're getting closer, and green indicates a pass. And what we want in here, we want six greens, okay? So I'm going to make changes to the width, the length, and the depth. Um, and then we're going to look for the greens. Okay, and then we're going to insert the detail box. So now we can change that into 3D. We go to the BIM toolbar. We put our location pointer in, which is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm choosing my sign. Press OK. And then in comes our little pointer. And basically what the location pointer is, if you can imagine, if you've ever... If you ever put in a little 2D sign icon, it, that 2D sign icon is a direct representative of the post and the foundation and the and the sign face. So now I've also pressed convert 2D to 3D as well. So I'm going to select my sign, which I've done, and then zoom in, and we can now see our, our 3D sign. And again, it's just one button press. It takes a, literally a split second to produce that. So we also have all of the uh, work zone signs as well. <clears throat> um, we do have like some more advanced sort of imagery of this stuff, but the idea is that you can produce en now any work zone signs. So if you're doing a lot of traffic management and things like that, um, I I'm basically just showing you how that they can be inserted real quick. We can change the lane numbers. We can add text to some of them and, and things like that. If you're doing any work zone signs, this you know ties into Line Pro as well. We've got cones and things like that in there. 
that users can basically sort of string together. And this is somewhere where we're going to be improving a lot as well. We're going to be adding more over time. So we'd be happy to work with anyone that wanted to work with us to sort of, you know, get yeah, customer opinion and things like that. So, yeah, so the work zones were added very recently. It's, it, it, they've, they've been very powerful, very effective tools in designing, um, you know, uh, guidance and making sort of work areas safe. Uh, this is a great tool for that. Okay. <clears throat> so for Line Pro, um, right, Line Pro has sort of many powerful features again. I think it's going to be a good thing to go straight into into the, the videos. So as per the Dubai Traffic Control Devices Manual 1 and 2, again, um, we have all the tools um, from within that, you know, so you can add any lines, any hatching, any symbols, and it's to the latest version as well, as is Sign Pro. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to add, um, we have a typical, you know, internal street arrangement. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of road hatch uh, just by manually drawing this in. Now, the other thing I should mention about the, the road hatch is that we can also attach it to objects as well. That's something that we do in our... We have um, an example town that we call, um, I think it's uh, Gulf Town. Um, and it, it's actually, a, I think it's a real area, or it's connected to a real area in Dubai. Um, and we basically have all the sort of the, the things in there, and some of them, are, some of the hatchings attached. So you can actually see this happening uh, in, in in one of our demo projects that we can sort of supply. Okay, so as I said a second ago, I'm, I'm just going to draw this in, <clears throat> and I'm trying to avoid the pedestrian island or refuge, depending on what your design is. And once I've finished, if I press enter, it will just draw the the center markings for me. But obviously, we can see there's a slight issue. Um, the the road markings have gone over uh, the pedestrian refuge. Now, the great thing about um, a lot of the commands in in Line Pro Dubai is that you can double click them as well. Okay, and when you double click them, we get more options. For instance, with the road hatch, we get the ability to either change the hatching diagram number, the speed of the road, which would affect the chevrons, um, the line type, the outer line type. We can change that. Um, knockout zones which I'm going to show you in one second we can reverse it in case you know your guidelines have come in in a different direction for instance we can also reset it as well um, so if you've got for instance a, a, a carriageway where you you need to sort of divide the traffic um, but you want it like completely even all the way down you can reset it to one meter off for instance uh, and then you can turn on uh, on and off different aspects of the hatch if you really want to maybe you're only replacing the center um, hatching. So you could turn off the outer lines. Uh, and you can change the colors if you want to. Maybe you want to change it so it's shown as existing. But for, for the rest of this section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a knockout zone. And when I then select my boundary, you can see that it, it's changed and it's removed that. This shape can be anything you want. Obviously, you know, I've just used uh, a 200 millimeter offset um, from the, uh, from, from the pedestrian refuge but you can you can have that as anything one of the other features as well is <clears throat> when when grips touch as well okay you can see these yellow uh, grips and what happens is once scripts touch those grips come to fruition they, they activate and it's so that if you ever sort of you know stick the ends together by accident uh, you can just drag them apart with those grips the other good feature is that it's actually still an intelligent object at this point um, you can see how I'm dragging it, and all the all the the hatching is 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 adjusting to the the actual site design. Okay. <clears throat> so here we have a typical arrangement, a roundabout. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm just putting in some some road markings. So for instance, I put in the uh, the crossing and some arrows. Now that is mind-blowingly simple to do. So what I'll do is I'll just rewind the video and I'll, I'll describe to you what's actually going on. So again, you can pick up and drag all of our objects and what you need to notice with the, the crossing is you can just drag it wherever you want. You can put it anywhere and it will just go wherever you need it to. You could, if you want, double click that crossing uh, and pick it up and change its width or drag it about and it will move to you. And I, I can show you that in a minute. Um, but what's happening with the arrow is that's actually being glued to a curb and it's being told to stay fixed at a certain point. So when you drag it, it actually drags down the curb. And again, this is something that I can show you. 
So with this demo, what you've just seen is, oh, this particular slide, sorry, um, we have a, a scheme, and when we want to quantify, we basically just press one button. It's as simple as that. Okay, so one button pressed, in comes the whole quantification for the whole scheme. But what we can also do is we can also annotate our scheme as well. And all we have to do is select the object and then just choose an insert point. And what you'll also see, oops, let's just go back one second. That's just jumped on again. Okay, so annotation, this is what we're looking for. And I'm trying to show you the detail box. There we go. So <clears throat> the great thing about this detail box is you can customize it to your company's design standards. So we give you the option to customize every aspect of so the offset uh, from text to border, the colors, the font style, um, the actual alignment, the text, text color, board, you know, uh, leader style, everything. So if your company has a certain way of working, you can customize that. And the same goes for the layers as well. All the layers are fully customizable, and with the layers you can export them, and then your co-workers can then import them. So one person can just make sure they're to your company standards, and then you all have the same thing to work on. Okay, so that's just basically selecting and pointing, selecting and pointing. Okay, um, now the, the last part of the slide is where I jump into a live demo is the 3D surface integration. Now this, this is a nice little snapshot. Uh, it, it's you know it's probably got about eight surfaces in there. Um, it was created using uh, Taurus, which is one of our roundabout design tools. So if you if you if you know our products we have Park Card for the car parks, um, just to give people a little bit of information. We have uh, Auto Turn which is um, ve you know vehicle vehicle sweat paths for any vehicles you know those vehicles get updated daily as well I think the last time we, we put something in was yesterday was a one of the cranes well, I think it's a so a German crane make so you can see that, that product still being supported uh, heavily even today um, we also have as well which I mentioned is uh, Taurus now Taurus is a you could describe it as an automated design tool for designing roundabouts so they're safe, uh, so they're accurate. Um, but this really is for the road marking. So what we've done is we've taken one of our roundabouts from Taurus um, and I've added road markings to it in Line Sign Pro Dubai. And next, I'm going to turn those road markings into 3D by, whoops, by draping them over a civil 3D surface. Now, <clears throat> the great thing about this is you've done all the work. You've done all the work in 2D. You, you've literally finished or, you know, for all intents and purposes. But when I want to drape the markings, I, I go to the 3D drape button. Uh, I press it. I choose my surface. Um, you may have more than one surface. You may have a, an enormous scheme, um, and you may divide, divide those surfaces up um, you know, in, into junctions or carriageway, what have you. This gives you the opportunity to choose which surface your markings want to go to press OK and several seconds later in come your road markings in 3D as well. So we've, <clears throat> our general rule of thumb is depending on the power of your machine, um, one mile of road markings um, takes between 15 and 25 seconds Okay, and also depending on the complexity as well. Um, it's quite quick. Gulf Town, which I'll show you in a bit, takes about two and a half to three minutes and that's got six miles of carriageway. Uh, I'm not going to turn that into 3D because I'm going to I'm, I'm going to show you the finished version, but I, I I think it's a good thing to show you. Some of the features as well, um, which makes us a really powerful BIM solution. Now, Dubai's RTA has a commitment to BIM, uh, and we do too. Um, so we produce 3D, as you've seen just a second ago, and we export data to Excel, and we also add data. Um, to our objects as well. At the moment, the scheme that we use is the ADMM, ADMM scheme from the UK, but you know we can easily change that out for another one. Um, we also export to JS. I, I'm, just before I go any further, when I say export, what I mean is we we target our objects, our signs and lines, and we export them for use elsewhere. You can just open them in another program like 3D Studio Max or you know, um, Navisworks and they'll come in fine, but we also do this export facility as well for several reasons. 
GIS, if you want to export our road markings, you can then take it into a GIS program, or you can overlay the road markings and drape them in uh, InfraWorks, okay? So if you do any InfraWorks models, you know, to do large presentations, use that and you'll send your drawings to uh, InfraWorks and it looks perfect as well. IFC, perhaps the most important one on the list, really. IFC um, in, in this uh, federation class is basically it, it, it exports geometry as well as data. Okay, so if you're working in a BIM environment in Navisworks, and I'm, I'm going to show you Navisworks in a minute, um, what happens is is you export our objects when you press our export to IFC button, and it takes the geometry and it also takes the data as well, and that's the important part. But you know, then you can just open it in Navis. Um, you don't have to do any data attachment or anything like that. It's just it's just one singular process. Okay. So um, that's the end of the presentation. But guys, I I just realised I've not asked the question, so I'm just going to ask this question very quickly. Um, could you just answer these two questions for me? It'll take like 10, 20 seconds if that's okay. Apologies, I should have done this at the start, but I was so eager to get going and show everyone our latest software, um, I just jumped straight into the demo. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate that. Very good split as well between AutoCAD and Silver 3D. At some point, we, we will be adding um, support as well for MicroStation. Uh, at the moment, this works in AutoCAD. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely be changing that soon. Okay, I will count to five and then one, two, three, four, five. Thank you very much. And then just one more question. Um, really, this is just, you know, in case uh, anyone would like a trial or any of the design documents that we've been showing as well throughout the trial. Um, you know, you, if you do, that's great. If, if you don't, no problem. Um, you can always email me after the fact as well. Um, just get in touch. I'll be happy to answer any questions. I'm going to do um, a live demo now, yeah, just once everyone answered these questions. Um, I'll just give it another few seconds, and then we'll we'll open Sign Pro, and I'm going to start by showing you some more uh, some of the newer signs we've got as well. Okay, we're nearly done. We're nearly done. <clears throat> okay, um, I'll count to five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Thank you very much for doing that. I, I, I appreciate that. As I said, I should have done that really at the start. Um, as I said, I was, I was, I was too eager. So. If you can imagine now, we're working on our signs and lines. And I, just before I, I do the live demo, I'm going to show you what the end result is, really. Okay. Um, so this is what we would call um, where you could do, use your clash detection. And what I've done is I've made a Navis file um, as if I've been doing a clash detection, um, just so we can see everything. I'm just going to move my palette out of the way there. So here's the aerial view of the whole scheme. Uh, we've got some round we've got a roundabout in there with signs, we've got a T junction. And what we can actually do is we can actually select the objects, um, go to its core object. Uh, let's just go there. And we can actually see the ADMM data being attached as well. We can see that we you know in the UK BIM is very, very important with schemes that are handed down by Highways England. So what they do is they create this this big server sort of uh, area. Uh, on a computer network where they, they basically save all this raw data um, and they use it for tracking the life cycle of objects, you know, of, of road marking signs. So they can, you know, send out uh, maintenance, con maintenance contracts uh, and they're becoming a very sort of data rich engineering sort of company. Um, we've also got other T, sorry, T junctions, uh, intersections. You see all the hatching there that's been done, the crossings, um, another junction. Um, it's quite nice if we zoom in when where we're at the signs, we can actually see that the um, edge markings have all been put in as well to the service. That's because we've modeled the medians too. Um, the signs themselves, again, this is straight from the IFC file, but you can just open this actual sign in in, uh, in 
in Navisworks and just you know scroll around it you can see that it's a it's full 3d no images or anything like that um, so let's just have a look at a few more signs because they do look they do look quite beautiful I, I, I know I'm biased but I must say <laughs> they do look very good okay uh, our road markings come in as well again ADMM data attached we can see that when we so if we select off that we can see that it disappears but if we select its core object the uh, ADMM tab uh, comes in and we can see all the details like its material there's still the other things that haven't come in basically are things that the user has to put in you know um, uh, just one thing about ty object ID status this is something that uh, other software would handle or you could just do it by hand it's entirely up to the user but yeah so all we do is we just open the IFC files within Navisworks and this is what you get this you get your scheme that looks absolutely perfect you know, and, and this has more uses than just clash testing, doesn't it? You know, if you want to show people, if you want to show the public, if you want to show a customer or, a, a, you know, a client or a, a, someone that's investing in a scheme, this is an absolutely fantastic way to just basically illustrate all the hard work you put into your, your projects. You know, the, there's a part of me that thinks it looks better in Navis than it does in AutoCAD. You know, it, it's fully rendered. You can basically, you know, move about as I'm doing. You can actually animate this process, but... You know, I'm not going to lie, that, that's kind of out of my uh, skill range. So. Um, but yeah, it, it looks fantastic. It basically shows your, your hard work in a very, very positive light, um, which is one of the reasons why I always like to, to end the, the, that portion of the demo of it. So if anyone would like a copy of this, uh, get in touch. We'll give you the, the, the means to get in touch later on. Um, we can send you this file so you would have this. You can check the data. You can scroll around it. You can have a look at what's going on. That's no problem at all. Okay.